Jeff, thank you so much, first of all, for being on with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. But when I was listening to what was going on before me, I thought I was on the wrong station. <laughs> <laughs> well, we sort of do it. Big job. bands and baseball, Jeff. Yeah, that's that's a new great. combination. We, I love both. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. Little Jonathan Schwartz in between. We throw uh, throw some music in there and have a little fun with it. But as I said uh, in the first half hour, when I said that we had a possibility of having you on. First of all, as a former manager, before we talk about the World Series itself, have you ever had a situation where the manager or the umpires made a decision on a ground rule and never told the managers about it? No. Uh, we, we had some strange things happen where you at times had to protect the umpire, and the same umpire gets you day, uh, maybe a year later and gets you suspended. I mean, you know, you say, hey, wait a minute, where was this when I protected you in a, in a bad call, which could have had the fans going crazy? And you say, okay, let's, let's use common sense here, place the runners where, where we think they might have been, but not where they should have been. And then a year later, you get in an argument with the same umpire, and he writes a, a false statement about you, and it causes you a two-day suspension of $1,000. That makes you say, hey, wait a minute here. This is not the way it's supposed to be. So... Anything you mention about some umpires, not all umpires, there's some great ones out there and have been over the years, but there are also some that have a little bit of attitude problems. Well, I just thought it was so unusual that they discussed the fact that that camera was in the field of play before the game started, but never brought the two men. I mean, obviously, as, as Bobby Valentine said on the postgame show, a million-to-one shot that it would hit one of the lenses of the camera, but it did. But yeah. none, of the, none of the managers or coaches knew that that was a ground rule that they put in before the game started. No, see, that's something that you go over when you hand the lineup cards over. You go over everything. You go all the way around the field with them. And uh, not during postseason play, but during the regular season, they'll have the, the uh, home team manager give the ground rules all the way around. He's familiar with his own ballpark. You know, all the, the ground rules for each ballpark are all written on the back of a lineup card. Well, obviously, that television camera was an extra one and it was not on the back of that card so that's that's something you go over when you're hand you are you know handing the umpires your lineup card and that's when it should be covered but that was interesting in fact when it happened the thought i had when it happened and my son who is a strength coach with the white Sox, said the same thing to me this morning when that happened we thought if that is rule of the home run that could turn this game and possibly this series around because instead of three nothing, runners at second and third still you can still get out of it. But if that's ruled a home run, you, first of all you, it's a three two game. But you're getting a guy like A Rod off the snide in a World Series, and he's pressing a little bit anyway. Even though he's had a great postseason, he wants to do the same in the World Series. If you get him over that hump, uh oh, watch out. And the other factor that uh, before we talk about the particular games, uh, Lee's performance now. You've been behind the plate with one of the greatest pitchers of all time, Sandy Koufax. We talked about Bill Singer earlier. We talked about uh, Nolan Ryan. Do you know in the first or second inning, or do you get a feel in the first or second inning that you've got not a perfect game? Nobody can think about a perfect game, but do you, you think he has such overpowering stuff at that particular or at that particular day that you're on your way to something? You know, Don, that's a real good question. Most of the games that Koufax and Nolan Ryan, for an example, started. You had that feeling every time he went out there. <laughs> now, there are other times where you've warmed the pitcher up in the bullpen, and you've left the bullpen saying, holy mackerel, does he have special stuff. And by the time you start the game, it's, it's not there. But with Koufax and, and uh, Ryan, if you got to about the fifth inning or sixth inning and you're looking up there and there's nothing but zeros on the board, you're saying, oh, boy, we got a chance today. But, you know, with those guys beforehand, your thought is, well, if we can get through those early innings and the little the dump shot here or, you know, one of the bloops or bloops or, or uh, check swing types of base hits does not happen early, normally it's not going to happen later because they can crank it up. You know, those guys got stronger as the game went on. Jeff, Doug Miles here. Great to have a chance to talk to you. I'm a, I'm a New Yorker as well, uh, like Don, and, and uh, remember when you were up there with, with the Mets, of course, uh, the great broadcasting career as well. But I just want to ask you, kind of amplify on the, the no-hitters. You've caught uh, Ryan Koufax and, of course, Bill Singer. Uh, How does that uh, glove hand feel when that, when that fastball is popping in there? You must have bruises on that, or, or do you not notice it at that time? You know, that's a good question, too, because a lot of people don't realize, especially at this time of year when you're playing out there and it's so cold, and you've got a guy throwing rockets. You know, he's throwing in the, the mid to high 90s, or if you've got a guy with a heavy sinker ball, 
all it takes is one shot that really gets you in one of the fingers, and usually it's the index finger on your catching hand because that's right in the middle of the pocket usually. Now, a lot of guys keep it out. Uh, you know, that the that old theory. By the way, did you ever know where that came from, where, where all this uh, history of everybody kept keeping their, their glove hand index finger out of the glove, where that came from? I'll the Johnny no. Bench? That came from Yogi Burr. He broke Yogi. a finger, and they wanted him to keep playing, so he stuck it out of the glove. Well, if Yogi did it, everybody does it. Now, you know, it ain't over till it's over. <laughs> so you got, that's how that happened. But, yeah, I, I still have on the index finger on my uh, catching hand, it's about, oh, maybe an inch to an inch and a half larger than the uh, throwing hand. And that's for, I haven't caught in a, in a ball game, well, playing these Legends game in the, in the off season, but I haven't played in a ball game with somebody throwing rockets like that for a long time. So that's like 35 years ago or, so or more, and it's still swollen. And I used to feel it, you know, we're from New Jersey, and when we stayed up there in the wintertime, not down here in Florida in this beautiful weather, the minute it got a little cold, the end of that finger went numb. Hmm. So, but that you, that's a good question because people don't realize that. That's why you play these postseason games in the snow, or it looks like it's going to snow, like the Phillies did last year in the World Series, or right. one of these bitterly cold games. You don't want to swing the bat. You don't want to catch the ball. You try anything to kind of relieve the uh, the impact of the pitch. I was watching a Tim McCarver's show. Actually, it was on this morning. He was interviewing. Uh, Carlton Fisk, and they were both talking about uh, how much of a beating you guys take uh, year in and year out. You, you probably lose about five years of your career if you play 10 or 15 years just from you have to take off a game every once in a while from, from the little nicks and cuts you get. Well, I didn't play enough to, to have that problem. But <laughs> I, do, I do have a new uh, knee replacement on one leg, and I think that's probably uh, a cumulative effect. Um, but that's why, and, and that was always my excuse why I hit this poorly as I did that uh, you know that catching the catcher takes a beating but that's true that's why when you think about uh, this Joe Maurer with back-to-back uh, batting championships incredible there had only been two catchers ever in the history of Major League Baseball to have uh, batting championships to their name before that and you could see why one was Ernie Lombardi and I don't know how he ever did he must have been an unbelievable hitter because he couldn't run a lick but, you know, that that's what happens with a catcher. Everything starts to hurt. And that's When you see the Hall of Famers like like Bench and, and Carlton Fisk, these guys having long careers the way they did and having big offensive uh, productive years, <clears throat> excuse me, that is amazing. Especially uh, Carlton caught for me when I was with the White Sox. Uh, I managed him three years. And his one hand is his catching hand. Here we're just talking about a catching hand was almost deformed it was so banged up and it affected his wrist he made this little thing where it was a rubber band that would go around his thumb around the back of his hand and around his little finger and it would hold his his wrist in a little bit from taking the pounding of the from the glove now you know carbon played into his 40s and still was very productive right at the end offensively and it, it always amazed me that he could do that 